an increase in conversion rates. OK, so let's swift over and uh, see a demo of autofill in action. So before we see the actual demo, I want to say we've actually collaborated with the Polymer team to create a really awesome site experience um, that we're going to be showcasing here in addition to autofill. So I'm going to tap in here to my shop. And again, this is the Polymer, part of the Polymer toolkit. Um, it's the e-commerce shop experience. And since it's so much colder this morning, I'm going to shop for a little men's outerwear. This uh, neon, what do you think, Ruslan, about this nylon jacket? It will look good on you. So I'm going to add it to my cart. So I want to point out that up until this point, it's been a really amazing experience. I've got to browse an amazing catalog of Google products. But I now encounter the part of the e-commerce experience that I dread. I'm going to have to fill out my entire credit card information, my shipping address, and my billing address. There's got to be a better way. As you can see, this is, a pretty, this is a pretty nice design form, but it still it doesn't get around the fact that I'm going to have to manually type this in. But as you see with autofill, I'm able to tap into the form and automatically fill in my information. It immediately is filled into the form. And if I happen to have a separate billing address, I could also fill that in. And then finally, just like the addresses are securely stored, my credit card information is also securely stored with the browser. So I'm going to fill in my MasterCard here. Now, the one piece that autofill doesn't save is the CVV of your credit card. So for security purposes, you're still going to need to enter this into the site. So you see, I placed my order. It was done. It was simple. Let's flip back to the slides. Great. Autofill is amazing. This is a product that I use myself almost on a daily basis, and it really simplifies the process of going through a web form today. I also want to point out that we're continuously launching improvements to Autofill to make it faster and more available to more users on Chrome. But autofill, again, is tied to existing form infrastructure. We use web forms as essentially the tool by which we're passing the user's payment and shipping information back to the website. So because of this, there are some key limitations. First, we can't solve the latency problem. We can't make the page load faster with autofill. And secondly, as you saw in the demo, it still takes multiple sections, multiple taps to get through a checkout process and actually submit my order. So going back to our two design principles, we wanted to start thinking beyond autofill. And it led us to the idea that maybe the, the best way to solve checkouts was not simply to improve on the checkout form, but to actually completely eliminate the checkout form. So I want to go through a quick exercise here. And I want everyone to close your eyes and imagine a world without checkout forms. This isn't a rhetorical exercise. I actually want everyone to close your eyes and just imagine a world without checkout forms. <laughs> So what does this mean? For users, this means that when I find something I want to buy, I can just tap and buy it. I don't have to go through a complicated process of re-entering all the same information. What does this mean for sites, for developers, for merchants? It means that you can focus on creating an amazing and engaging experience for your users and not have to worry about creating a checkout process, not have to worry about optimizing that checkout process. We're really excited to bring you the Payment Request API, which is the way that we're going to make this formless world a reality. Payment Request is a JavaScript API that allows the browser to handle the heavy lifting of payment collection. The result is a simple one-tap experience for the user and an easy way for a site to receive and request payment. Our goal with Payment Request is to create an open API so no matter what browser, what device, what platform, or what payment method you choose, you'll never have to enter another checkout form.
The Payment Request API is currently under development in the W3C Web Payments Working Group. Our goal is to create a universal cross-browser standard for any website to accept any form of payment. There are three key points to keep in mind when thinking about payment requests. First, this is not Chrome only, Google only, custom proprietary API, no. This is a cross-browser, standards-based effort where we are collaborating with other browser vendors and members of the developer community in order to define something that any browser should be able to implement. Second, we're targeting mobile platform first, because this is where we can solve the biggest problem. But the payment request API is designed to be extensible and will be available on other platforms as well. Third, our goal is to create an open ecosystem. Any website should be able to accept any form of payment that they desire without the need for complicated custom integration points. So we're excited to announce that Chrome has an impl implementation of payment request today for you, the developers, to try. We expect other browsers to be implemented soon. Uh, shout out to Microsoft in particular. They have been uh, a great partner in the W3C Web Payments Working Group. So let's go back for a second to our checkout form. So just like with autofill, we take this manual and tedious process and we make it simple. In fact, in our implementation that we have that we're going to show you today in Chrome, we actually are using the same data that the users already saved to the browser through autofill, and we're exposing that data to the payment request API. But what makes this even faster is that rather than relying on the checkout form, we pass it directly via this open API. We're also able to reduce latency because Chrome is rendering the payment collection UI natively. So you don't have to render a complicated checkout form that takes several seconds to load. So payment request is extremely fast. What this all amounts to is taking a multi-step, multi-section, long checkout process and makes it truly one tap. Let's take a look at how payment request works. The process begins when the website passes to the browser information necessary to neg negotiate this payment. This information includes, for example, how much is being charged, what is in the shopping cart, so the browser can pr present it. Most importantly, this information includes what are the accepted payment methods on this website. The browser then determines the intersection between the website's accepted payment methods and what the user has installed on their device. The browser presents this UI to the user where the user can select their preferred method of payment and authorize this transaction explicitly. A payment method can be anything as simple as a credit card stored in autofill or a third-party application that you and I can write that would provide the payment to the website. Once the user authorizes the transaction, Chrome invokes this payment app, gets the response back, and passes it directly back to the website. From the standpoint of the website, the only thing that happened is a single JavaScript call that retrieved all of the information that the website needs to process the transaction. Let's actually take a look at the code of how you would implement this. Uh, the W3C members are working really hard to make this API as simple as possible while still passing in all of the information required to negotiate the transaction. The code that you see is how it is implemented today in Chrome developer version. Uh, the W3C is continuously evolving this API based on the feedback from uh, merchants and website developers. So please participate in the process and uh, give us your feedback. We would appreciate it. There are several parameters that you need to specify for payment request. Uh, the first two are required. Uh, the first one in particular is the list of payment methods that this website accepts. Uh, for the legacy case of credit cards, uh, which is what we're uh, showing, showcasing here, you would pass in the credit card types. Uh, the second parameter um, are the shopping cart contents and possibly the shipping options. Uh, finally, 
we're showing here the third parameter, which is optional, which specifies that this website is indeed uh, selling physical goods and would like to request the shipping information from the user. Remember, our goal is to pass in to the website all of the information that the website needs to process the transaction. And one of the most common pieces of information that the website needs is shipping address for the user. So the website would use this request ship on true uh, parameter to specify that they do, in fact, need the shipping information. And then they have the option of uh, updating the total based on the shipping uh, speed or the shipping address that the user has selected. So yeah, let's actually see how it works. So let's flip back to the phone and uh, leave the code up so we can walk through what's happening as we go. So I'm back on my Polymer shop, but we've implemented this you know, relatively minimal 15 lines of code to include a call to payment request when the user clicks the checkout button. So I'm going to come back into men's outerwear. And this time, I'm going to buy this nice uh, YouTube hoodie here. I'm going to add it to my cart. I'm going to view the cart. And then again, we get to my least favorite part of the e-commerce experience. I'm about to check out. I'm about to land on a long, complicated form. But now that we've implemented payment request, Chrome is actually going to natively expose a UI where I can select all of my billing and shipping information. So there it goes. See how fast that was? Zero latency, no loading new pages. Chrome natively services this UI where I can select my shipping and my payment information. And again, this is the same shipping and payment information that we previously used in the autofill demo, but now it's available within this nice Chrome UI. So talk about a little bit about what's going on with the, the top row here, Ruslan. Sure. In the top row, the user sees the identification information for this website. Uh, this information is the title of the website, some iconography from the website to make sure the website can be easily recognizable, uh, and for security purposes, the origin of the website, where the user can make sure they're indeed passing their money to, into the right hands. Uh, the total information comes from the website. This is the shop end card. Uh, the shipping and the payment is something that's most frequently and recently used by Alex on his phone. So this is smartly selected. But if Alex wanted to change his uh, shipping address, for example, he could tap in and, and change the selection if he wanted to. So let's go ahead. OK. So the only step when I click Pay, because our goal is to return everything the merchant needs to process the transaction, the merchant presumably needs the three-digit CVV. So just like with autofill, I'm going to have to enter it here in this minimal form. And I click Continue, and it automatically returned it to the website. The, the other thing to note about this interaction is that the response that you get back from the web browser when you invoke payment request is exactly the same as the response you'd get back when your web form is submitted. So we're really trying to simplify this so that you know, we're really trying to take the process of implementing a web form and really encapsulate it in this nice uh, native Chrome UI. So let's flip back to the slides. So you've seen how easy it is to request credit cards. And again, all of the credit cards that are available in Autofill are also available via the Payment Request API. But one of the most important features of the Payment Request API is the ability to support other forms of payment. And other, more secure forms of payment, like Android Pay, will now be available in the browser.